Hi, my name is Charles Matthews. I'm the architect here with the Grizzly Bear Architecture and Design. And today we are looking at answering the question, how to work with building codes. And this is a, a big picture overview kind of a uh, presentation. So if you need more detailed information, I'll be glad to, if you send me a request, I'll be glad to look into making a more detailed uh, description of how to work with building codes or any of the other topics in our series. But let's go ahead and get started. Uh, first of all, in order to work with building codes, you have to understand what they are. Um, and they are the legal requirements. Uh, if you are going to build a building in whatever area of the country you are located in, uh, there are certain requirements of things that you have to have uh, in the building. Now, whether or not those codes are enforced or not is a different issue, but you are still legally required for your building to do and to not do certain things. What they're supposed to do is they're supposed to guard and protect life, health, and safety uh, of its inhabitants. Building codes uh, date all the way back to uh, Bible times, uh, especially in the giving of the law in the Old Testament. I think it's in the book of Leviticus. But uh, there are requirements that uh, a person build a parapet on the, uh, around the roof of their building in order to prevent people from falling off the building. And so this is the first example that I see uh, of building codes uh, and it's actually a protection of life and it's a requirement that the building owner has as a responsibility to the building, uh, the building's inhabitants. And so that's what building codes are supposed to do. That's not all that they do, but uh, that is what they're supposed to do. But in order to understand the, the big picture of how to work with building codes, uh, there are six primary things that you need to consider. Uh, the first is, what is the use of the building? After you know what the use of the building is, whether it's a house, a new commercial construction, a place of worship, uh, then you'd need to know the building location. Uh, this is dictated by the piece of land that you're going to be building on. And so if you have a certain use in mind, but you can't build in the place that you want to build at, uh, or you can't build things large enough, that's a problem. It's also why it's important to hire an architect early on so that, uh, and I would even consider hire the architect before you buy the piece of land. If you do that, uh, the architect can help guide you toward buying a piece of land that would minimize your overall architectural expenses uh, in, in ways that can, can save you lots of money. And so spending a little bit of money up front on using an architect's services in order to help you to assess a piece of land would be uh, critical. And that from a viewpoint of uh, developing that construction feasibility analysis. But anyhow, uh, after you have the building location determined, you then need to know how big the building is going to be. That based on whatever makes sense based on your economic numbers or your functional goals. Step number four is examine specifics related to the building in the context, meaning how close is your building to other buildings and if they were to catch fire or your building was to catch fire, uh, how would it be that you would save the lives of the people who are in it and prevent the spread of the fire to other buildings? So if you're close to a lot of other buildings, then you're going to have to make your building of other materials. Next, it's compare the building you design with the building codes, uh, what the building codes require that you have. 
So uh, if you have a certain occupancy use, a hazardous use, it's going to have different requirements than uh, a use for assembly or a business use. <laughs> Although some people may think that their, uh, their business uh, is a hazardous working environment from, I guess, a relational viewpoint. Uh, if, if you're talking about only the materials that are involved or the, the elements of the business function and operation, you want to compare the building uh, codes, their requirements with what you have as your use. And finally, you update the drawings to reflect the codes. Meaning if you find out that you need 18 inches uh, on the left side of a door, then you should go ahead and change that to the 18 inches. So, uh, this is the, the big picture overview of how to work with the building codes. It's the way that is suggested for uh, specifically working in LA County. Uh, other areas may require other processes and obviously that's fine based on, on that, but this is the overview. If you know and can answer these questions, um, then your work in using the building codes would be easier, but this is the big picture overview of how to work with building codes. And you do that by way of determining the answers to these questions. So thanks for tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video. Hi, this is Charles Matthews. Just wanted to say thanks for watching the video. If you have any thoughts or comments, feel free to leave those below. Visit our website at grizzlybeararchitecture.com. This video is one in a series of videos that address various issues surrounding architecture and our practice of architecture and grizzly bear architecture. And uh, if you have any thoughts or comments, I'd really appreciate those. Thanks.